Welcome to another Unit Circle Survival Guide. Today we're going to be looking at 30, 60, 90 triangles and how they can help us understand the unit circle a little bit better. So here we have a unit circle and you can see that only parts of it have labels and that's because we're going to focus on our 30 degree reference angles and so you can see those are the ones that have the blanks um, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So you may have already watched videos on how to label your unit circle angles in degrees and or radians. If not, check the video description. I'll have some links there. Um, but this is really going to be focusing on how do we figure out what those ordered pairs should be. So remember our unit circle in standard position is centered on the origin. And we know it's called a unit circle because it has a radius of one unit. And so we're really going to use that in our 30, 60, 90 triangle knowledge um, to figure out these coordinates. So let's create a right triangle that leads us to our first ordered pair. Okay, so we're trying to get the coordinates of this point. And of course we have the origin. And so let's create a right triangle. And we'll draw in the final side here on this initial side of the angle. So we have a triangle and Let's go ahead and label. We know that this, based on our knowledge of our unit circle and how we've labeled it previously, we have a 30 degree angle if we were to rotate from the initial side to this terminal side. And that also can be noted as pi over six radians of rotation. We're really going to focus on 30 degrees for this video since we're talking about 30, 60, 90 triangles, but know that all of this will hold true for pi over six as well. So now we can see we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here's 30 degrees, like we've already said. Here's 60 degrees by default because we know we have a right ang angle created here. So that's 90 degrees. And of course we know the angles of a triangle sum to 180. We also know the length of one of these sides. We said the radius of the unit circle is one and we have a radius here. Our hypotenuse is actually a radius of the circle. So we can label that with one. So before we go any further, let's sketch a 30, 60, 90 triangle out to the side and remind ourselves what those special relationships are. So here's 30 degrees, here's 60 degrees, and here's our right angle. Okay, so we know our short side is opposite of the smallest angle of the 30. So that should be our X, whatever length that side is. And so the hypotenuse will be double the short side, or we can label that 2x, and the longer leg opposite of the 60 degree angle is going to be x times the square root of three. So those are the known ratios for this special right triangle. And this is just a great concept to review because it shows up all over the place. All right, so now knowing that, let's get back to our specific triangle on the unit circle. So if we know that the hypotenuse is one, and we know we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know that the hypotenuse is supposed to be double the short side. So our short side is here. And so if our hypotenuse is one, our short side must be one half. And now that we know our short side, we can, um, we can calculate our longer leg. So we know it should be our short side times root three. So one half times the square root of three is the square root of three over two. So now we can easily fill in this ordered pair because we know that if we move from the origin to the right along the longest leg, we're going a distance of square root of three over two, and that's about 0.87 if you were looking at it as a decimal, and then you're moving up one half. So we can label this, the x is the square root of three over two, or the length of the long leg, and the y coordinate is one half, or the length of the shorter leg. So now that we've seen this once, there's no need to really memorize a unit circle and all of its coordinates. We can understand that it goes back to our 30, 60, 90 special right triangle for this particular set of coordinates. And what's great is we've done this once, we don't have to do it multiple other times because, and you probably can see based on how this is set up, but this triangle that I'm now drawing in the second quadrant is the exact same triangle that we had in the first quadrant, it's just oriented differently. So instead of having root three over two, one half, 
we know that we're just going in the negative direction, but it's still that distance of root three over two. So we can label the x coordinate negative root three over two, and the y coordinate is still equal to the short leg, one half. Okay, pretty similarly in the third quadrant, we just reorient the same triangle that we were working with in the first quadrant. And this time both values will be negative, but that long leg of the triangle is still on the x-axis and the short is still in the y direction. So negative root three over two and negative one half. All right, and similarly in the fourth quadrant, this triangle would show up just flipped upside down. And so we know that we are going in the positive direction for the x coordinate and in the negative direction for the y coordinate. And of course, if you want to fill all these in, you'll see that these have the same reference angles as our 30 degree angle from the first quadrant. We have 150 degrees or five pi over six in the second quadrant. We have 210 degrees or seven pi over six. That's the angle in the third quadrant. And then we have 330 or 11 pi over six in the fourth quadrant. And so notice if you were dealing in angles, all of these angles have a reference angle of 30 degrees. So that's just the angle to get back to the x-axis. So that's this angle right here. And then if you were looking in radians, same thing, we would just say the reference angle is pi over six because it would take pi over six radians of rotation to get to the x-axis or it's that angle right there on the x-axis. All right, so then the whole reason or a main reason that we learn the unit circle is so that we can quickly evaluate exact values. So these are just trig ratios for particular angles that may show up a lot in problems that you're working. So I'm just going to use the triangle in the first quadrant, but it would extend to all the ones that we've done um, and all the ones that we'll do in future videos. Let's say you wanted to find the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, well we know from SOHCAHTOA, and I'll probably post another video just to review that as well, we know that the cosine ratio is just, let's see, I'll just write down here, cosine of an angle is just going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So when we look at our triangle that we have, we're saying our adjacent is root three over two and our hypotenuse is one. So our cosine of 30 is just the square root of three over two. And because we picked the unit circle for all of these ratios, we are going to have the hypotenuse as one. It's a really clever design. And so we'll have very simple ratios. And when you're looking at the cosine of 30 degrees and you're using a unit circle, it's simply the X coordinate or root three over two. Similarly, we have sine, let's say of pi over six, do one in radians, but it's of course that same angle, that 30 degree angle. And so if we wanted to find the sine, we know that trig ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. And so we would have one half over one or just one half, which is the Y coordinate. And let's do one final one. Let's say we wanted to find the tangent of 30. And eventually you'll get so comfortable with the unit circle, you won't have to even calculate these. You'll just know them without even a second thought hardly. For the tangent, we know we're going to do the opposite over the adjacent. And so our opposite is one half over our adjacent is root three over two. So that's one half times two over square root three. And we see that's one over root three. And when you rationalize that, of course, we get, I'll write it up here, the square root of three over three. So again, after a while, when you're really comfortable with the unit circle and you've practiced it for a couple of days, you'll see that you won't actually need to calculate this. You'll just know, oh, if your reference angle is 30 degrees or pi over six, you know that the tangent for that particular angle will just be root three over three. And then all you'll have to do is make sure you double check what sign you should have, positive or negative. All right, so that was a review of 30, 60, 90 triangles and how we use them in the unit circle. Um, definitely check out some of the other videos on the unit circle survival guide. I'll have videos on um, the other special right triangles, 
how to label a unit circle in degrees and radians, how to label the full unit circle, and so much more.